Hello there. Yes, of course, the River Thames has seen lots and lots of changes over the past centuries, and we couldn't possibly put that into two minutes or so, could we? Yes, we could, because we have with us the hits sketch show, Horrible Histories, and Bob Hale is here with his Thames report. Over to you, Bob. Thank you very much. It's lovely weather for it. Well, here we are, and behind me, assuming I'm on the right bridge, is the River Thames, which started life flowing off into another river that's now in Germany. It's slightly confusing, isn't it? You see, up until the last ice age, Europe was one giant landmass, and the water from the Thames flowed into the River Rhine, though they made me cut my water turning into Rhine joke, which is a real shame. Anyway, at the end of the last ice age, the ice melted, Britain became an island, and after a while, the Thames started to attract a bit of attention. In fact, there's evidence of settlements here as far back as Iron Age Man, a comic book series that never really took off. But it was the invading Romans who really put London on the map. Literally, in fact, naming it Londinium and building the very first First, London Bridge, which Boudicca promptly burned down. So they built another one. Uh, yeah, there it is, that's the other bridge that they built as London became the capital of Roman rule Britannia. Until the Romans stopped ruling Britannia, the Saxons abandoned London and decided to build their own version a mile outside the city. Oh, but not for long, because the Vikings attacked and the Saxons quickly moved London back inside the old Roman city walls. And for good reason, because those Vikings do not hang around. In fact, they come over, pull down the supports of London's only bridge, and in moments, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down, inspiring a nursery rhyme, the lyrics of which I can never remember. But another bridge is built. Yes, the well-famous London Bridge, which remained the city's only bridge until the 1700s. So this one saw a lot of history. It saw the Golden Jubilee for Edward III, the first river-born coronation for Richard III, and of course, Henry VIII's funeral procession. Though this last one got a little bit messy when Henry's body took an overnight break somewhere near Richmond, exploded, and bits of him got eaten by dogs. Though I think he went to the dogs sometime in his 30s. It's a known phrase, look it up. But it's not just the royals who are using the river. Oh, no. By Stuart times, the Thames has become one of the world's busiest docks. In fact, there are so many boats, they actually have traffic jams on the water. <laughs> really? And when it gets cold, it's even worse, because in winter, the river would freeze completely. In fact, you could drive carts up and down it for months at a time. They even put a fun fair on it. And in Georgian times, it once flooded so badly, they could use boats inside Westminster Hall. And, well... Not all of that water was water, if you know what I mean. Yes, with London's population booming, sewage became a major problem. In fact, in 1858, there was so much body grot in the Thames that the Houses of Parliament themselves, that actually hurts, was overcome by the stench. And when people started dropping like dodos from disease in the doo something had to be done. So, Joseph Bazalgette invented this incredible new drainage system, which quite literally took the pee out of London. Yes, this incredible sewage system transformed the banks of the Thames, naming new embankments after the royal lovebirds Victoria and Albert. Yes, why say it with flowers when you can pronounce it with poo pipes? It's so romantic, those of you. Oh. <laughs> and, in fact, the Thames remains as a wonderful thing to this day because of those very doo-doo ducks which are still doing the business, which is why right now the Thames is full of ships instead of... Well, anyway, that's the history of the Thames in a very soggy nutshell. We hope you enjoyed it. A very happy jubilee. You, ma'am, a very happy birthday to mine. And, and it's back to you, Shan. That is how you say it. Isn't it? Uh, it's close enough. Yes, it's well close enough. Someday all news will be like that. Thank you very much to Bob Hell.